Is that working now? Hmm. Okay. Let me know if you can hear now. I don't want to keep going until until I'm sure. Well, we are going to hope that it's working. Can you guys, you can hear me? Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't know what I did, but somehow I did mute myself. So I don't know what I last would have said. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, but thank you for letting me know. I really would have been sad if I'd gotten through the whole thing. <laughs> You guys couldn't hear anything. So um, I mentioned that I I don't talk enough about the starter kit. However, Stampin' Up's deal is amazing. So for $99, you get $125 in product of your choice. So you're already saving $25. Then they ship all of that for free. So that is another $10 in savings. Uh, so that's great. And then during May, so this ends May 31st, you can also get $66.50 worth of free in-color products. And that's on top of the regular starter kit. So that includes grid paper like this, except that it's got the new ink colors on it. And all five of the ink pads. And then cardstock in each of these five colors. And then also some printed paper, which hmm, this, this little strip right here is from the, the pack that you would be getting. So, well, I'm really glad that we sorted that out. So thank you for letting me know. All right, so join offer. If you are interested at all, it's a great deal. And then from there on, you save 20% or more, um, depending on certain things so anyway there's no obligation past that initial purchase to continue buying um, they don't come looking for your firstborn child they don't expect you to pay them back for all of the goodies that you got in that starter kit if you choose to not keep going and there is no expectation that you do anything other than craft in your own craft room so you don't have to teach classes, do lives, none of that. It's it's purely just like having a discount shopper card. So I certainly recommend it. The If you wanted to continue getting that discount, you just spend about $100 a month and then you're good to go. So again, no, never any penalty. So that's that. And then I wanted to show you, it's so pretty. This is the Starry Sky new tumbler that we're doing or that they're offering and there's one in each of the five new ink colors and so this was the one that i chose and i just love it and i will tell you i am a yeti girl through and through but this kept ice as ice for at least five hours and there it wasn't even full so i was really impressed that it did so well so about that now susan Mom, you are the winner for this week, so I'm going to send you a pack of cards. So thank you for sharing last week. And I don't know if you guys saw, but I put in my stories on Instagram and Facebook both of these cards that I had done from the Paper Pumpkin Kit this month that I am so glad I received because I think I mentioned that I did not remember to update my credit card information, and so... I actually missed the first billing, so mine didn't come until a couple of days ago. But I had a lot of fun playing with it, and it actually made 10 cards. <clears throat> so every paper pumpkin includes instructions and stamps and ink so that you can make the cards. It includes the envelopes, the card bases, the die cuts, everything you need. And the instructions are very detailed so you know exactly what to put where or you can do what I do and do your own thing so what I did this round and this is kind of my usual approach I made up 
the first set of cards. So they are really pretty. I was very glad that I did manage to get my hands on this. And so you see one design in each color and then the dots are all five colors. So you can kind of add a little bit of variety. So these are the regular cards and then I took these. And so my stories on Facebook and Instagram were asking which I should make tonight. And this one I used kind of a fun technique. It's not perfect. Doesn't really need to be. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. And then this one I did some masking to get those different orchid oasis circles. So I think that we'll start with this one. And if we end up with any extra time, I will show you how I did that part. So let's get going. We've got a starry sky card base here. And it looks like I did not bring over my bone folder. So we're just gonna use the scissors here like this. It took me a long time to decide that a bone folder was better than that, but I, I actually do get a better outcome when I do the right thing. So first I'm gonna just bring in a plain basic white panel. And let me pull all these off and show you. So I just took the negative space from, so you can see this one was the best wishes, this was the happy die cut, and then there were two circles, and then this was a different happy. And I just decided to use this circle and make that my mask. So now that you see what I'm up to, I'm gonna go ahead and put my post-it notes back on here. Who knew that post-it notes were crucial to crafting? So for this one, because I'm going off the sides, I don't need to worry about getting post-its all the way around, but I'll add in the other two in just a second. So I've got a blender brush here and I'm going to bring in my Orchid Oasis ink pad. And just pick up a little bit of ink there. And then I just always get rid of the first really heavy bit that's on the tips of the bristles and then just in a soft swirling motion get some ink on there and you can build it up as much as you want to but I think I'm going to stop with that for this particular circle and there's no you know right or wrong way to space these and um, you know how many to do and that kind of thing but I'm just going to offset some. Thank you for sharing. All right. So then, oh, and see, I didn't do a good enough job of getting rid of that first bit of ink, but that will be all right. And on the first one that I did, I didn't do a good enough job of masking off with post-its. So I ended up having to do it again. And you can, you do want to be careful because you can pick up some ink that you didn't actually want on your hands if you're not careful. Um, I know some people recommend using vellum for the mask because it doesn't, I don't know, it just seems to work better. But here, I didn't decide to use that option because I already had this available. So just a couple more circles. And I did try to vary the intensity of the color between the different circles. So that's why I picked up a little bit more ink for this one. And I hear my child. She popped in here right before I hit the live button and was just acting like this was where she belonged and I needed some of her chapstick this evening was the story. So yeah, she's a handful. She's always got a story. I'm glad you're liking it. I just think that there are so many things you can do with these kits that you don't have to feel limited, although their designs are always really nice. 
and you can pull in a lot or none of other supplies to be able to do different things, which makes it good too. Because you certainly don't want to feel like you have to have the whole collection of everything in order to be able to make a card that you designed. So, I think we're going to be good with that one. And now just for fun, because I do try to remember to do the insides too. This is just a clean piece of basic white, same size. And I'm going to get just off the bottom here. <clears throat> All right, so there is that. We can put the Orchid Oasis and the Blender Brush away. And we can go ahead and get this mounted inside the card base. And we're going to hope I didn't pick up ink right there because that also happened to me today. I was having a messier day than normal. I don't know what was going on. All right, there is that. So now we have this and I'm going to bring back in the supplies that came with the, the kit. And so you see there were dimensionals that we'll maybe use here in a second. And I didn't actually use any of these little dots on my um, alternate cards, but they're amazing. I really like those. We've had those in several different um, colors and black and they're just always nice to work with. So I'm just gonna find the right sheet here. Theoretically, it's around. Maybe, where did I use it? Nope, there's some stuff hiding. Okay, so now this card, or this, this layer, I guess, is actually for this card. And so you can see I popped out that circle and then added a different die cut. So I'll make another one of those later. But I had this pretty little piece left over. And when you have gold on something, you don't want to just throw it away. So that is kind of where this card started. But before we get that going, I want to add some little dots. So I'm going to grab a little bitty block and my Starry Sky ink. Ooh. My reception just got really not awesome. Hopefully that resolves. All right, so I'm going to add these cute little dots all around. And as I do this, I am just rotating my block so that the, the stamp doesn't look quite so uniform. And of course I'm doing it in exactly the same way each time. So it's still managed to look kind of uniform, but that's okay. And we'll get those, and I think there, and we will call that good. So now it is pretty much down to, actually, I do still need to stamp a couple more things. So we are going to pull off the U. This was the part about this card that I was like, I don't know if I really like how that turned out, but we're gonna do it again because we're here. And I need the just four. Okay. So bad stamper habits, but I'm gonna mount on both sides of my block and just and I try to look through since they're clear it makes it a little bit easier and we're just gonna drop that nope that's not straight there we go and i am also going to ink up my u and we'll just do that like that 
now we're really done stamping. So for this, what I want to do, I'm just bringing in a pencil and I am just going to draw the outline. So I think I've shown you that new stamp set and die set that does this for you. And of course, for a paper pumpkin, that does not exist. But it's really not too terribly hard to just do it yourself. So once I get this outline done, then we will just cut it out real quick and we'll be set. You all are very, very quiet tonight. Is anyone doing anything special this weekend for the, the holiday long weekend? We are typically, um, my mother-in-law hosts a big barbecue and all of her siblings and all of their kids and all of their kids' kids and her aunts, there's not very many of the older generation still alive, but her aunt comes. So everybody gets together and does, you know, salads and burgers and whatever. And kids play and it's, it's really fun. Over the 10 years that I've been married to Joe, because it'll be 10 years this summer, it's crazy. Um, the families have grown a ton, which has been fun to watch. So anyway, so that's kind of our usual Memorial Day thing. And then we always go out to the cemetery. She spends a lot of the year shopping for things that she can use to decorate her family members' graves, whether it's for, you know, Memorial Day or other seasons. Um, and that was not a tradition that I was familiar with. So, Janie, how did you get COVID? I'm so sorry. Are you doing okay? I would be especially concerned with everything you've been through the last year that now you've got to fight that. So I hope, hope that you're going to be okay. Do you guys want dinner? I can bring dinner. I made artichoke chicken something or other with rice tonight, and I really fully expected that my children would just revolt. And Emily was being picky, you know, which is not unusual, but Jonah actually really liked it, so that was fun. So, okay, I've done all the easy parts, which is why I keep turning it, <laughs> trying to decide how to tackle the rest of it because it is a little bit fussier than some of the fussy cutting that I do. So your doctor's overnighting drugs, well, that's a relief. But seriously, if you need anything, please shoot me a text and I will be happy to make it happen. Um, I actually was worried that Jonah had COVID last week and then finally, you know, he'd missed, I think he ended up missing three days of school last week. So I did ultimately test him for COVID before we sent him back to school. And it was just one of the rapid tests at home, but he came back negative. So I was kind of surprised, but certainly relieved. So I haven't been paying nearly as much attention lately to what different variants are around and all of the things. Um, because it just sort of feels like it should be over, even if it's not. Oh, <laughs> bologna and ice cream. Well, if you can still taste the ice cream, then you're in good shape. I don't know about the bologna. I think that was not so much my generation. <laughs> So it got up to 90 degrees today. I was very sad because somehow we went from 
I still needed a jacket to go outside to now I just can't go outside. It's just too hot. But it's supposed to get cold again over the weekend. It's such weird weather. But I did get my garden in on Sunday, so hopefully it will all do well. Although one of my tomato plants is kind of a funky color. So I've been using that, I can't remember what you called it, Aunt Pat, but the Google, Google Lens, Google something. Anyway, and it's awesome, but I was wondering if I could, you know, shoot a picture of the tomato plant and have it tell me, oh, that's got, you know, whatever funky virus that tomatoes get. So might have to try that. I'll get back to you. All right, I think that's good enough. I'm tired of cutting. So there is just a little bit of pencil mark on there that I didn't quite get. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Your eye is not going to follow the white edge the way it's going to follow the stamped image. So now I have lost my sample. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to trim this down just a little bit and we will get this done. And then it's up to you guys, but you can choose to hang with me if you want to see just the quick thing I was gonna show you about that other card. So, get this on here with some semblance of straightness and Google Lens, okay. Yes, it, it seems like such a brilliant program. I was at our piano teacher's house not too long ago and Jonah was asking what a flower was in her yard. And so I couldn't remember even though I knew I should know. And we just whipped out the app and figured it out really fast. Incidentally, it was an allium, it was very pretty. Um, that is not a bulb that I have ever grown but I do enjoy seeing them in other people's yards. So yeah, Jenny, I guess you are stuck at home. That is just such a bummer. All right, so we're going to just set that on there. And then I wanted to pop up the just four. And All right, we will go roughly like that. Let's see, I can pretend it's kind of straight. All right, so that is that. So I hope you liked the techniques I showed you there. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is just bring in one more card base here. And so I didn't do a great job of reading my instructions, even though their instructions are really good. So this is totally on me, but I didn't use this card base for the right layer that was provided. And so then when I figured that out, I was like, oh, well, what am I gonna do now? So what I did was, decide to use all the colors. And I'm just gonna show you real quick. So this was the other side of the die cut. So I actually used this to lay these out on their card and it made them perfect. So there's another tip. I think I put that in maybe my group. So definitely take advantage of that because it was really nice. Now I've got this one nice and straight and centered and I'm just going to make tiny little marks on each layer helps when I can actually see them and I don't have any way to clean my stamps because I was washing everything it's just been one of those days all right, so I'm going to bring in a larger block and the happy stamp. 
So another thing with photopolymer stamps, I find it's easier to get them because they're so pliable. If you want it to actually be straight, you don't want to set it on your block. You want to pick it up, if that makes sense. So that looks straight, I'm happy with that. Now, oh my gosh, I seriously cannot keep track of things. Okay, so I started with the sweet sorbet and I just inked this up and then my head might get in the way because I'm trying really hard to do this straight and centered and whatever. So there is that. And actually, I really do have to have a way to clean this. So we might not finish. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all right. We can do the dark blue and the orchid. So as you see, I have just kind of given myself the line that I want to stamp on. And this one I want offset. So I'm going to do that like that. And bring in my starry sky. And get that one on there. And so you can see where this is going now that it's, you know, we've gotten this far. So once I've done that, I just come back in and erase the little pencil marks. And then I also used this cute little dot stamp and just added it kind of all over in all the colors. So that is what we ended up with. So I think that is where it is for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips that I shared, the cards that I shared, and um, you know, don't forget if you like it, case it, share it on my group page. I would love to see it over there. And I really much, very much appreciate you being here. I'm so glad to see you every week. And I hope that you have a very nice weekend. Don't forget about the deadlines for my classes and um, signing up for my emails. And I think that will just about do it. So let me just sign off over here. All right. Well, thank you all. I'm glad you liked it. And I will see you next week and it'll be June and I'll have a new series of projects to share with you. So sounds like it should be fun. Take care, you all. Bye.